though? Well, people don't know how to do it. You're right. And so maybe it's useful. I mean, this is certainly tying up loose ends. I feel like this is where we really soar out toward the edge and stretch the envelope of the institution. But you must know how to do it, right? And so how you do it, in my humble opinion, but based on experience, is you, first of all, you take a committed dose. You don't take some namby-pamby, piddling, testing it out, toe in the water kind of dose. Because, you know, even in the Christian, in the gospel, Christ says, it's the lukewarm that I vomit out of my mouth. You know, <laughs> don't bring me any dilettantes, no dabblers, no drugstore cowboys. So you take a committed dose. What is a committed dose? A dose that when you think about taking it, you feel fear. That's a committed dose. <laughs> so you take a committed dose. And then you take it on an empty stomach. And then you take it in silent darkness. Leave, the, leave your Walkman alone. Forget Mozart. Forget the Pink Floyd. Forget Bach's choral preludes. It's ridiculous. All that stuff sounds fine without these things. And this is heresy to some people. I mean, to some people, it's all about choosing the music. Again, this selling out, you know, what the hell? You can't illuminate your mind without having a synthesizer diddling in the background. So silent darkness, committed dose, empty stomach, and then it's very simple. You lay down, you shut up, you close your eyes, and you look at the back of your eyelids with the expectation that you may see something. Now, people have described, in describing this back to me, people have called that, have called that the McKenna mm. method, which seems to me just, you know, you must be nuts to think of it that way. Because I, I talked to someone, I won't name him, um, but a great researcher, widely published researcher in psilocybin, and, I, and he'd done 80 trips and given it to 25,000 people and so forth. And I said, well, what did you make of the hallucinations? And he said, I never closed my eyes. And I realized, you know, that these guys are just quaking with terror. And a lot of people, the main reason in the 60s, I saw a lot of people who took LSD for one reason only. committed dose in a shamanic situation and I, I and now I'm not advising this this I do not advise but this is how I do it I do it alone I have never understood the the obsessive need people have to take drugs in groups it just makes my flesh crawl and the only time I've ever been able to do it comfortably was with Amazonian people and Mestizo people where there was a language barrier. But if I take a psychedelic with somebody, then I just I listen to them breathing and I hope they're all right and I get all tangled up with are they all right and should I say something, should I not say something and this and it just turns into this mother hen thing that I can't stand. And and often when I take psychedelics alone I pass through a place where I say to myself, boy, I'm sure glad there's nobody else here because I think this would really alarm them. <laughs> at, at this point, people would be reaching for 411, and since I can't, it's not going to turn into an embarrassment for me. So I think, you know, committed dose, silent darkness, empty stomach, Lay down, shut up, be still. Keeping still, the I Ching says. It's all in keeping still.